Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad to be here in this Secure 2014 conference. My name is Victor Alvarez. I'm a software engineer at VirusTotal, which is now a tiny portion of Google. And I'm here today to talk about Jara. But before anything else, I would like to do a quick survey. So please, those of you who already know what Jara is, raise your hands. Uh, just a few people. OK, that's great. There is potential new user here in the audience today. Um, for those of you who don't know what Jara is, let me give you a quick overview. Jara can be described by this analogy. Jara is to files, what is not is to network traffic. The problem with this definition is that I'm assuming that you know what is snort. But in case you don't, um, SNORT is a network intrusion detection system which allows you to create rules for detecting traffic in your network. And those rules can be based on the contents of the packet, but also on other characteristics of the packet, like you know the destination IP address or source IP address, destination port number, or maybe the protocol being used and stuff like that. Jada is something very similar to SNORT in that sense, but instead of being oriented to network traffic, it, it is oriented to files. So with Jara, you can create rules to detect patterns in files, in a hard drive, for example. And those patterns can be based on the content of the file, but also in other characteristics of the file, like the file size or the type of the file. And for some specific file types, you can go deeper and create more complex rules for those file types. But let me tell you something about the story of Jara, why I created Jara in the first place. Because I believe that the story can give you some hints about what Jara can do. Back in 2008, I was working as a malware researcher for an antivirus company, and I had to uh, take a look at hundreds of files every day and determine if they were malware or not. And in case they were malware, I had to classify them by family. And I found myself too often in the situation in which I was looking at some piece of malware and I knew that I, uh, I had seen that malware before, but I couldn't remember the name of the family. I couldn't remember how to classify that malware and I knew that I had seen that malware before because I could, re could recognize certain patterns inside the file. Like, you know, file names or URLs or domain names or maybe just messages left by the malware author in the file. Like in this case, for example, this, wait, these strings here, like actor zero, localhost, fnet, ounce u, these strings could be useful for classifying this specific malware family later on. But the problem with this was that um, all this knowledge about how to detect particular malware families based on patterns found inside the file was stored here in my head. And the problem with that is that the human brain is very good at extracting patterns, at knowing which pattern is good for detecting which um, family, but it's not that good at remembering those patterns for a long time. And after uh, some time, that knowledge bloops, disappeared. The second problem was that all my coworkers, all the people who were doing the same job than me were in the same situation. All of them were constructing their, their own knowledge, their own corpus of knowledge about how to detect particular malware families based on those little patterns, but we didn't have a way to share that knowledge with each other. So with those two ideas in mind, the, the idea of being able to put that knowledge in a persistent way and being able to share that knowledge with more people, Jara was born. But let me go to the interesting part. Let me show you how a Jara rule looks like. 
this is a very simple JARA rule <coughs> composed by those by two strings. And as you can see, the rule have an identifier, in this case, Trojan DCOM RPC, and a string section and a condition check section. The string section is where you put the strings or patterns that are going to be searched later in your files. And the condition section is where you put the logic for your rule. This particular rule um, try to find files containing both strings because the condition is A and B. You want both strings present in the file. The condition in this case was A and B, but it could be also A or B, or maybe A and not B, if you want the string A in the file but not the string B, or it could be A and B or C, if you have a third string named C. And in general, any Boolean expression that you can construct by using the standard Boolean operators, or, and, and not. But there's more. Suppose that you have three strings, and you want at least two of those three strings present in the file. No matter which two of them, but at least two. You could express that by using this condition here, A and B, or A and C, or B and C covering all the combinations. But this doesn't scale, because if you start adding strings to your string section, your condition will grow a lot. If you have 10 strings, for example, your condition will be like this. And for those cases, we have the off operator. The off operator receives a number and a set of strings. And it guarantees that at least that number of strings from that set appear in the file. So in this case, we have this condition, two of A, B, and C, meaning that you want at least two of A, B, and C. But sometimes you can use the them keyword instead of having to write the set explicitly, because the them keyword uh, represents the set composed by all the strings listed in the string section. So this is the same like this in this case. In some other cases, you cannot use the them keyword because there is some string that you don't want included in the set, like the Pac-Man string here. Pac-Man string here is a separate string, and we want only two of those three ghosts, ghost one, ghost two, or ghost three. So we cannot say two of them because that will include Pac-Man as well. But we can say ghost asterisk, which represents the set of all the string starting with ghost. All the string with an, with an identifier starting with ghost. And we can also change the number, of course. We can say one of them, which of course changed the meaning of the condition, and this is equivalent to A or B or C. Or we can say any of them, which is the same thing. It's just syntactic sugar. Any of them, which is A or B. But we can also say all of them, which again change the meaning of the condition. In this case, this, equivalent, this is equivalent to a and B and C. But sometimes you need to create rules based not only on the presence or not of some string in the file, but also on the number of times that a string appears in the, in the file. And that's done by using this uh, number sign in front of the string identifier. Instead of using the standard dollar sign, you use the number sign. And that represents the number of times that a string appears in the file. So this condition is telling that you want the string A, NAC in this case, three times, exactly three times in the file. You could also use other operators like greater than or lower than. That's perfectly OK. Jara supports most uh, comparison operators. 
But sometimes you need to create rules also based on where the file, where the string appears in the file. So for this, you have this add sign in front of the string identifier. The add sign represents uh, the offset where the string is appear, appearing in the identifier. But because some string can appear multiple times in, in a file, you have to use an index to indicate which particular occurrence of the string you want. This condition is telling that the first occurrence of A must be at offset 10 in the file, and the second occurrence of E must be at offset 20. But there are situations in which you want to ensure that some string appears at some offset, but you don't mind which particular occurrence of the string it is. And for those cases, you have the add operator. The add operator guarantees that a string add, a knock in this case, is at offset 10. This is a more useful example, more realistic one. Um, this rule is trying to determine if the file is an exe file, because all the executable files in MS-DOS and Windows start with these two um, characters, MZ, and, and they must appear at, at outset zero, which is the very beginning of the file. This rule can be used to find executable file in, in the system. It's a very basic check, but it works most of the time. Um, up to this moment, we, we, ha we, are, um, we have seen examples based only on text strings, like this. But there are some other types of strings in Jara. You have X strings and regular expressions. X strings are just sequences of bytes expressed in hexadecimal form. And regular expressions are pretty standard regular expressions like the one you may know from other, from other uh, programming languages, for example, like Perl, PHP. And you can mix all these types of uh, strings together. You can put them, all of them in the same rule. There's no problem with that. You can create mixes of different types of strings. And you can also use modifiers with the strings. For example, you have the no case modifier. The no case modifier allows you to search for strings in case insensitive mode. Here, because this, the secure string is accompanied by the no case modifier, it will match secure in lower cases or all upper cases or any mix of secure and lower cases uh, and upper cases. And you also have the full word modifier. The full word modifier allows you to search for words which are world words only. This is very similar to the option that you may find in most text editor when you want to find some word, but you want to, you don't want to to find that word appearing as as a part of a longer word. You just want to to find the word separated, but non-alphanumeric characters. This is the same, because secure here is accompanied by this full word modifier. It won't match this insecure here, or this uh, portion of, of um, this sum string securing containing insecure or secure 2014 or insecure. In extra string, you can also have wildcards like this, represented by question mark in, in the string. The, the wildcards can be nibble-wise, as you can see here, or you can uh, represent a full byte with two question marks, like, like you can see here. And sometimes you need to go beyond that and express uh, your wildcards in another form, like this. This is a jump. Well, well, what I'm, I usually call a jump. This is the same that three consecutive wildcards. It's a sequence of, of wildcards. They can be fixed y, uh, fixed length, sorry, like in this case, or variable length. In this case, this is the, si the same than, than this. 
But sometimes, as you don't know how many bytes you want to put uh, in between the BH45 part of the string and the AC49 part of the string, you can use this other syntax, indicating a minimum number of bytes and a maximum number of bytes. So this will match any string starting with BA45, with probably no byte in the middle because of the zero here in the, uh, as the minimum um, limit. And this can match also this other string with one byte in between or two bytes in between. Sometimes you don't know how many bytes can appear in between the first portion of the string and the second one. And in those cases, you can leave the upper limit undefined, which is the same that an infinite upper, uh, upper limit. Regular expressions are pretty standard regular expressions. You can use most features that you are familiar with from others, other regular expression systems. Uh, for example, here we have a character class. This will match any uh, string composed of characters from A to Z. Or you can have quantifiers. This will match two or three digits. Or you can also have alternatives. This will uh, match the realized word with uh, either S or Z. Uh, and in general, any feature you are familiar with will be found here in Java with a few exceptions. And the most important exception probably is back reference. Back reference is a very pop, uh, powerful feature of um, regular expressions. And it allows you to search for patterns where some portion of the matching string is repeated at another position. For example, here, this regular expression matches two digits, followed by a dash, and then followed by the same two digits than before. So this will match any string like 01-01 or 74-74. But it won't match 57-34, because the digits after and before the dash are different. But unfortunately, this uh, is very slow. In order to implement this, you need uh, a regular expression engine capable of doing backtracking. And this will make your uh, regular expression engine very, very slow. And because Jara was designed with a speed in mind, I decided to lift this out and not implement it. Of course, there are a lot of other different features in Jara. You can put tags to your rules. You can put meta information in your rules. You can use include files. You can put comments in your rules. And a lot of other different things that I will leave to you to investigate on your own. But let me skip all these tiny features and let me concentrate on really important and awesome features of Jara. And one of those awesome features is our, uh, modules. Modules uh, are the way in which you extend Jara functionality beyond the simple pattern matching. For example, we have the PE module. The PE module allows you to create rules based on characteristics of PE files. For example, here we have this rule trying to detect PE files, which are dynamic lean libraries, by checking one specific bit in the characteristics field of the PE header. But you could also search for files with more than 20 sections, for example, or for files having the first section, name it dot text, or maybe a file importing some function by name from some DLL, like here. This, in, this, trying, this is trying to find files importing the DNS query function from the DNS API DLL. Or maybe files exporting a function by name. Or maybe a file uh, for a 30, 30, um, 64 machine. And a lot of other things that 
I will leave again for you to investigate on your own, which is the gentle form of saying, read the manual. Don't get confused by this slide here. We didn't go back in time to the previous talk. The reason for this slide here is because Cuckoo and Jara make a great duo together. It's funny because in the, in the previous talk we saw that um, Cuckoo could use Jara for creating rules and detecting scenes, and, and Jara can do the same root scene, can use Cuckoo to detect scenes. So maybe we should join a force and create something together. But uh, the, the way in which Jara and Cuckoo can integrate is by using the Cuckoo module. The Cuckoo module allows you to create rules not only based on content found inside the file or even in characteristics of the, of the file, but also on how the, the file behaves. And this can be done by sending Jara, by passing Jara, both the PE file and the report generated by the Cuckoo sample in JSON format. And then you can create rules like this, trying to find files accessing some particular file in the file system. Or maybe this other rule, trying to detect files accessing some registry key. Or this other rule for detecting files, sending, doing the domain name resolution for some domain name. Or this other, uh, trying to detect files, sending HTTP requests to some server on the internet. There are some other models uh, coming, for example, the ELF model, which is very similar to the to the PE model, but oriented to L files, which is the executable file format for Linux. The hashes model that will allow you to create signatures based on hashes of the files. And, uh, could be the, the hash of the whole file, but also hashes of some particular section of the file. And the PDF model, which is just, just an idea right now, I don't have a clear idea of how to implement that and which kind of functionality it will, be, it will have, but it's in, on the plan. But the good news is that you can do it yourself. It's very easy to create a module for Yara. If there is some particular feature that, that you want to see included, you can do it. The only thing you need is some familiarity with the C programming language and there is a very simple API for creating new models. It's well documented. And you can use the, exi the existing models as examples of how to use that API. So I encourage you to go and explore the documentation and create your own models. For example, if you are interested in, let's say, um, some file format, some image file format, like G, GMP. Uh, you could uh, create a module parsing that file format and extracting from there the relevant attribute of, the, of that file format and exposing those attributes to Jara. So you can later create rules based on those attributes, like you could search for images having more than a certain number of colors or a certain number of layers, or maybe um, images larger than some size, that kind of things that you can do. The other important feature of Yara is his ability to integrate with Python. You probably know Python, it's a very popular programming language. You can find libraries for Python for doing anything, and Jara is not deception. In fact, I believe that without the ability of using Jara from Python, Jara won't be as popular as it is today. Most people use Jara from Python. This is how you use Jara from Python. The first step, of course, is importing the Jara 
library as you will do with any other library in Python. And then you must compile your rules. You have your rules in source form and you have to compile it before using it. And then you can use those compiler rules to scan some target file and get the results back. Or you could or you could also save those rules to a binary file. This is useful when you have um, some rules that you use over and over again, and instead of compiling the rules every time, you can compile them once, save those compiler rules to a binary file, and then load, lo you can load the, the rules from that file, because it's faster loading a rule from a binary file than compiling the rules again from source code. Here you have how to load a binary file, and then again, how to use those mm, rules to match, to try to scan some file and get the results back. The result of, ma the, of a scanning some target file is a set of matches. That set can be empty, of course, if your file is not matching any of your rules, but eventually you will get some matches. And those matches have attributes like the rule matching in this case, and the strings that are matching in that rule, and so on. We don't have too much time here to explain all the little details of how to use Jara in Python. There are a lot of Mm, others advanced features, but um, I can say that mm, you can use most features of Jara from Python. You don't need to go straight to the C library to use some hidden feature. Most of the functionality of Jara is being exposed by this uh, module from for J for Python. But you know what to do in order to know how to do it properly. And here you have the documentation. Here, this is the place to go to find out more about Jara. Here you will find how to create your own rules, how to build Jara from source code, how to uh, create your own models, and much more. But you may be thinking, why should I care to learn about Jara and try to use it? Well. In case you are not convinced yet by all these nice features of Yara and the multiple things that Yara can do for you, I'm going to use the million flies argument. Yara has been used by lots of people, by lots of people from many different companies and for many different purposes. So I encourage you to go and explore what Yara can do for you and I'm pretty sure that you will find it useful. So, thank you. Are there any questions? <clears throat> Hi. Uh, it seems to be a really uh, useful tool, uh, but without all these rules, it's not so useful. Is an, uh, is there any central repository with uh, Yara rules? Well, the Yara is like those toys that you can buy that they say in the package, but it's not included. So the rules are not, in, not are not distributed with Yara, but you can find places where people uh, exchange Yara rules. There are, for example, there is, for example, a forum called Jara Exchange, a list, a discussion list, where people from many different companies are in contact and they have a central repository of Jara rules. But this is separated for and has nothing to do with Jara itself. Thanks. <laughs>